Today we are going to take a look at writing linear functions and we've already practiced this skill a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into number one and two. It says write a linear function to model the given graph. Pay close attention to the scale of the x and the y axis. So anytime you see that word linear you should be thinking the formula y equals mx plus b. And to write a function in this form we need to figure out the slope and the y intercept of the line. So let's go ahead and start with the slope. If we're given a graph, best way to find slope is using the formula rise over run. And to find our rise over run, we're going to pick two points on the graph. So I'm going to go ahead and pick these two points. It doesn't matter what points you pick, you should still get the same slope. I'm going to use these two. And working left to right, so working from our red dot here to the blue dot, we need to figure out how much we have to go up and down and how much we have to go left and right. So let's start with up and down. Currently this dot is between 2 and 4 on our y-axis. So uh, we can assume that it's at 3. Okay. And to get to the blue dot, we're going to ha have to go up from 3 all the way to 6. So to get from 3 to 6, our rise is up 3. Then for our run, that's how much we have to go left and right. So after we go up 3, we have to go to the right by 1, because we're going from 0 to 1 here on our x-axis. So our run would be right 1. Okay. Uh, turning those into integers here, uh, up 3 is a positive 3, right 1 is a positive 1, and 3 over 1 gives us a slope of 3. Okay, so there's our slope. Second thing we have to find is our y-intercept here, our b-value. Okay, and that's simply the point on the graph that's on the y-axis. So where does our line, where does our function cross the y-axis? Okay, and that would be this dot right here that we've kind of already used to help us find our slope. That's the point on the y-axis. And that point is right between 2 and 4, which means our y-intercept is going to be 3 as well. So to write this function, this linear function in y equals mx plus b form, uh, all we have to do is substitute our slope 3 in for m, so y equals 3x, and our y-intercept is a positive 3, and that's going to get plugged in for b, so y equals 3x plus 3 would be that linear function in slope-intercept form. Okay. Along the same lines here on number 2, we are writing a linear function, so that means y equals mx plus b. We have to find our slope and our y-intercept. So let's start with the slope. Uh, we're going to use that formula rise over run to find the slope, picking two points on that graph. So let's go uh, these two points here. Uh, to find our rise, so working from left to right, we have to go down 1. So our rise is going to be down 1. And our run is going to be to the right, 1, 2. So down 1, right 2. Okay. Down 1 as an integer is negative 1. To the right 2 is positive 2. And negative 1 over 2 uh, gives us a slope of negative 1 half. Okay. Second thing we have to find is our y-intercept here. So going back to our graph. We have to find this b value, so take a look, here's our y-axis, okay, and here's the point on the y-axis, that's at negative 1, so b is going to be negative 1. Alright, so plugging those two values into our formula, y is equal to our slope is negative 1 half times x, and then our y-intercept is a negative 1, so we write that as a minus 1. So that linear function can be written in the form y equals negative 1 half x minus 1. Okay. Uh, moving beyond that, if we have a table of values, we also want to be able to create a function to represent a table of values. Okay. So for 3 and 4, it says graph the data on the table of the on the coordinate plane and use the graph to help you write a linear function to represent that data. So one option we always have uh, when we're giving a set of data, we can plot those points on a coordinate plane and then use that coordinate plane to help us figure out our uh, y in, or slope and our y-intercept uh, for the function. So let's start with that. Uh, 
each point here is an x and a y value. So here's our first ordered pair. It's negative 2 comma 0, which would be left 2 up 0. Okay, the second ordered pair would be 0 comma 3. So over 0, up 3. Then we have the ordered pair 2, 6. So right 2, up 6. And lastly, we have the ordered pair 4, 9, which would ends up a little bit off our graph, probably somewhere right there. All right. Now that we've plotted that data onto our coordinate plane, uh, you can see that it is going to be a line there, which means we can write a function in y equals mx plus b form. Okay, so starting with our slope again, rise over run. Uh, to get from, I'll use these two points here. So to get from the left point to the right point, we're going up 1, 2, 3. So rise is up 3. For our run, we are going to the right 1, 2. So run would be right 2, which gives us a slope of positive 3 halves or positive 3 over 2. For our y-intercept, the point on Here's our y-axis here. Okay, the point on the y-axis is that point right there at 3. So our b is going to equal 3, which means the equation of this function, this linear function, can be written. Um, if we plug in our slope and our y-intercept, it's going to be y equals 3 halves x plus 3. Very similar process on number 4. Let's go ahead and start by plotting those points. So we have 4, 30. So here's, remember, each point is an x and a y value. So 4, 30, uh, followed by the point 6, 40. So right 6. 6 would be right here between 4 and 8. So 6, 40. Then we have 8, 50. So 8, 50 be right about there and then finally 960 a little bit off our chart there all right so now that we've plotted it it's going to give us a straight line which means we can write the equation in y equals mx plus b form again so just going through those steps again find the slope using rise over run so I'm going to use these two points here Okay, to get from the left point to the right point, this is where you have to be careful. We're going from 30 up to 40. So that means even though we're only, it looks like we're only going up two spots, we're actually going up a total of 10 because we're counting by fives here on our y-axis. So we're going up 5, 10. So rise would be up 10. And then for our run, we're counting by twos, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on and so forth. So we're going to the right by 2. So up 10, right 2, which means our slope is positive 10 over positive 2, which can be simplified to 5. So slope of that line is 5. For our y-axis here, now uh, you might notice that none of these points are on the y-axis. So what we have to do is kind of follow this pattern backwards. So here's our original points. We're going to follow this pattern backwards and to kind of figure out where that line would hit the y-axis if we continued with that pattern. So it looks like from each point we're going down 2 into the left 1. So down 2, left 1, down 2, left 1. And you can kind of see where that line's going to cross the y-axis. So right here, this is going to be our b value. If that line extended back to the left, it would cross at 10. So our y-intercept is going to be 10 which means our final equation can be written as y equals 5x plus 10. All right, on the next page here, uh, we're going to be doing the same thing, but I'm going to show you a little bit of a shortcut here, um, how to write a linear function when we have a table of values. Okay, and this, will be, this way it will be a little bit quicker than having to actually graph those points and then come up with the equation or the linear function there. <coughs> So let's talk through this here. It says write a linear function that relates y to x for the table. Use the formula m equals change in y over change in x to find the slope. All right, so once again, there's that word linear, which means we are using our formula y equals mx plus b. 
And same two things that we've always had to find. We've got to find our slope and our y-intercept here. Um, instead of using rise over run, we're going to use this formula, uh, change in y over change in x to find our slope. It's just another way of saying rise over run. When we do our rise, we're really looking at how our y values are changing. And when we do our run, we're looking at how our x values are changing. So it's just a different way of saying rise over run. OK, so here's how this uh, formula works. To find our slope, here's our y values. We just need to look for the pattern here. So we're going from 65 to 60 to 55. So we're going down by 5 every time here. So that's going to be our change in y is a negative or down by 5. Okay. For our change in x, let's go over here to our x values. We're going from 0 to 10 to 20. So we're counting up by 10s for our x values. And that's going to be our change in x. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure we include our labels here with our slope. Um, so that was down. Our label for our y-axis is in thousands of feet. So down 5,000 feet. And to the right, our label is minutes there, so over 10 minutes. Okay, if we were to reduce that, uh, it would give us negative 5 over 10 can reduce to negative 1 half. So it's a negative. 1,000 feet for every two minutes. So our slope is a negative 1 half. Okay, second thing we have to find, as always, is our y-intercept, so our b value here. To find our y-intercept, we simply have to look at our x values and find where x is equal to 0. Okay, the matching y value there is going to be our y-intercept. So our b in this case is going to be 65. Okay. Now we're plugging those two into our formula y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b. Uh, and when we do that, we should get y equals 1 half x plus 65 for our formula, for our function there. All right, so let's work through a couple more examples here. For number 5, writing the linear function means y equals mx plus b. Okay, to find our slope, we're going to do our m, our slope, is going to be change in y over change in x. That's another way you can write that formula. All right, so starting with our y values here. Okay. Our pattern, we're going from 3 to 5 to 7, so we're going up 2 for our change in y. So m is going to equal positive 2. Notice here that change in y goes on the top. So even though the y value is the bottom value in our table here, the change in y for slope goes on the top of our fraction. Okay. For change in x, we are going from 0 to 3 to 6. So we're going uh, changing by a plus 3 there, or a positive 3, which means our slope is going to be 2 thirds. Okay. To find our b or our y-intercept here, uh, go to our x values and find where x is equal to 0. The matching y value is going to be our b, because that's the point. 0, 5 is the point that's on the y-axis there. So there's our slope. There's our y-intercept, meaning the final linear function can be written uh, as y equals 2 thirds x plus 5. Okay, one last example here. Uh, writing the linear function for this table, y equals mx plus b. Okay, finding our slope first, change in y over change in x. Okay, our y values, we're going from 6 to 12 to 18, so we're going by up by 6, or a plus 6 there for our change in y. So m is going to be, once again, notice that even though the y value is on the bottom of our table, it goes in the top of our fraction. Okay, for change in x, here's our x values, we are going up. One, two, three, four. That means we're just increasing by one every time. So our final slope is six over one, which can be simplified to six. And if we include our labels there, that was six pancakes for every one cup. So our final slope would really be if we lose our if we use our labels there, six pancakes per cup.
Moving on, second thing we have to find is our y-intercept or our b-value. So I'm going to do a little bit of erasing here so we can see our table a little bit more clear. Okay, to find our b-value, we're looking for when our x-value is equal to 0. And notice here, on this table, we don't have an x-value of 0. But we can figure out where 0 would go in this table if we follow the pattern backwards. For example, if we count, go backwards here, 4, 3, 2, 1, here, was, here is where our 0 value would be for our x. Okay. And we're going to do a very similar thing for our y values then. For our y values, we're going down by 6 every time. So if we just subtract 6, subtract 6, subtract 6, 6 minus 6 would give us 0 there as well. So here is the point on our table that repre represents our y intercept or our b value there. So when x is 0, y is going to be 0, so our y intercept is 0. Okay. Finally, if we want to write that function, that linear function in y equals mx plus b form, we can plug in our slope and our y intercept. And when we do so, we should get y equals 6x plus 0. Okay. And like we've kind of touched on before, if the y intercept is a 0, you don't need to include it there. You can just write that function in the form y equals 6x. Okay, so there's a little bit of a shortcut way uh, when you're given a table of values how to turn it into a linear function, or how to write it as a linear function without having to graph those points on a coordinate plane.